Welcome to today's video guys and welcome back to the channel. In this video I want to give you guys a quick little tour and explanation video of how I've self-converted my Ford Galaxy. Welcome to today's video guys and welcome to the inside of either a car, a van or a camper van. I really have no idea how to classify this but it doesn't matter. So this car has actually been in my family for over 15 years because I come from a family of seven, five kids and my parents used to drive us down to France uh, from England in this car which was ideal because it's nice and spacious, had seven seats so a really perfect family car. However, it hasn't been driven in around five years. It's just been sitting on the driveway at home. And obviously we can't do a lot of uh, long haul travel at the moment because of the pandemic. So for the last month or so, I've been traveling around the UK a little bit. I've been to Dorset, to the Cotswolds, and I'm currently now in the New Forest, just doing some mini road trips and mini adventures in this van and uh, sharing the videos with you guys. So if you do enjoy those types of videos, then please make sure to uh, hit that subscribe button and give this video a like because it really does help the channel out. P.S. by the way, I think it's important to know I'm not a carpenter or a skilled tradesman in any way. All of this was trial and error. So for anybody thinking, oh, I can't do this, I can't build that, I don't know how to use saw, hammer, nails, you name it. My skills are not very good, but it's all trial and error. You wait till you fail, you muck it up, you do it again, you improve it. So uh, don't be demotivated. You can do it if you want to build something like this. Let me show you around and uh, show you what's going on. So first things first, the most important room and the only room in the house, really got to stop calling it that. Anyway, this is the bedroom. This is where the magic happens, or should I say absolutely no magic happens. What I'm lying on here is a memory foam mattress, which could probably do with a bit of extra padding because it's not the softest bed you'll ever experience, but for little trips like this, it's absolutely fine. And fingers crossed, I'll actually be able to get a good night's sleep tonight. And then underneath this foam mattress is a futon bed which I actually bought on Facebook Marketplace for 20 pounds, which was ridiculously cheap and secondhand. But honestly, as soon as I saw it, I knew that it was gonna work exactly how I wanted it to. So the great thing about this is the bed actually folds up this way and also up this way. I will show you an example of that, which means I can access storage underneath and I can also use it as a sofa if and when I want to. So a couple of new additions are actually these photos uh, which I've taken through the last few years of my travels and I decided just yesterday actually to stick these on and hang them up just to add a bit more color and I don't know character to it just to make it feel a little bit more homely. What do you think of that? I think they look quite nice. That was in Canada, incredible. My dogs, Austria, India, Nepal, there these ladies. So really good memories for me to uh i don't know kind of remind myself of what i've done because sometimes it can be a bit lonely if you're just in here on your own so i just thought adding some pictures would make it a bit more vibrant we also have for extra storage a netting which i got on amazon everything by the way uh, for things like this i will link in the description because i know it's very useful if uh you know people see something like this and they want to get it themselves so link in the description um for anything that i have here uh, you'll see it listed i also made these curtains here which simply hold on you just pull across 
because obviously you don't want any weirdos looking in when you're sleeping and it's actually just on a bit of bamboo which uh, I stole from a friend's house last week and then pushed up into the ceiling and glued but it's pretty sturdy and then we have some Tibetan uh, prayer flags again for some more color just to uh, make things a bit fancier so to continue with the theme of curtains I obviously needed to have something to stop people looking in at night so what I keep up on the netting storage which I just showed you is these curtains which again I bought from Ikea and uh, I basically just cut them down to size put some velcro on the side of the window up here and again on the other side of the curtain cut it down made it fit nice and snug and you simply just stick this on there, stick this on there, stick it round the window. I cut the door handle out just so then you can, you know, in the mornings actually find where the door handle is. And then you close the door, put that round there, and then nobody can see you sleeping. So for storage, everything is underneath the bed and uh, I pretty much just put here some elastic string and a nail in the side so that that holds that up. This is the memory foam mattress which I was talking about and the base of the of the, uh, the futon bed which I bought on Facebook. And as you can see here, I have all of my storage. I have pots and pans. I have toilet roll because you definitely need that out in the woods sometimes. I have food at the back here. And then I also have a portable gas cooker which I get out to cook. So I'm just going to show you my process of cooking just so you kind of know how it works. Basically the other day I built myself a kind of cooking unit, cooking platform I guess you could call it. And uh, I get that out from upstairs. I keep saying upstairs because I don't know, but it's obviously just the roof box. Get that out, set it up and then I can start cooking. So I'll just show you how I quickly do that. If it rains, I'll probably cook inside, which, you know, is probably a fire hazard, but building this like I did the other day, I at least have some protection from the rain and a bit of wind. It's not perfect, but it's absolutely fine for what I need. And then, as I say, I can get my chopping board out, frying pan, move the boxes around. I have some plates, my gas cooker, if you want to see a video of how I really use all of this, which I won't show you in this video, then make sure to check out my previous video because I showed quite a lot of how I cooked uh, inside the van in that last video. So everything that I need is pretty much all underneath the bed. One, it looks nice and tidy and of course you want to make use of all the extra storage and the space that I have. So there's all my food, pots, pans, toilet roll as I said and uh, some bags. And also, you probably can't see it very well, but this here is a leisure battery, which I will explain to you in a second. That is underneath the bed and basically just gives me a lot more power and uh, battery life. So I don't actually drain the main car battery. So one of the most important things for me was trying to think, how am I going to get power on the road to charge my laptop, to charge my phone? So of course, I don't actually drain the main car battery as i quickly just showed you underneath the bed here i do have an external completely external leisure battery which pretty much powers everything else that i need so this device here i can't actually remember what the heck it's called uh what is it it's upside down some car i don't know linked in the description anyway it basically just gives me three cigarette lighter ports and four usb uh sockets so i can charge phone laptop I did have to buy a adapter to charge my laptop but it also powers here the uh, the LEDs or this doesn't actually power it but this just turns everything on and off and it comes with a 10 amp fuse inside and what I can do if I don't want to use the leisure battery and I want to charge things while I'm driving and the car is on then I can actually just plug this device into this cigarette lighter here at the back which you know it was already in the car i won't do it but that will actually power this which will then should i'm not actually sure if this works but it should charge the leisure battery and then charge everything else and it won't drain the car battery because the alternator is creating power or something like that i'm not a car guru or 
electrician well actually that's another story but <laughs> this is great definitely recommend getting one of these and i'll show you what it's like when i actually turn it on so on the side here i actually installed a little on off switch because basically then i can just turn that device i just showed you on and off from inside the car without having to get out uh, and it makes things a lot easier so that comes through the side here now my leisure battery has power because the red light is on then i can turn this switch on my lights have come on underneath and up there as you can see the leds and it also shows you your voltage i know this is upside down but that's just how i had to have it so i could fit these sockets in you know so they weren't hitting the end of the bed but 12.7 uh, volts and then you can turn each individual cigarette lighter socket on and the usbs are always on and uh yeah as you just saw there leds underneath the bed not sure why i put them there just to be fancy but they look okay so you might be wondering where's all my clothes and you know other things toiletries well it's all under this top half of the bed and uh, as i mentioned earlier it simply folds up so i can access the things underneath and i can also use it as a sofa it's very easy initially i did have another mattress on top of this but for me it made things too heavy to move up and down all you have to do here is just pull up on the side hear the squeak and here i have my bag with everything in and yeah all of my clothes are underneath here and it's exactly the same storage unit as I have there, apart from you push up the bed. I did actually have a toggle here, which you would just turn to hold this in position. However, I snapped it trying to record this video. So I'll just show you this in a bit more detail. As I said, there's all my clothes and everything, which I just pack in a normal, um, I don't know, backpack. You could, of course, lay it all out. But for me, I'm always coming in and out. So I just leave everything in that. I have a 20 litre um, tank of water and then also a small one just so you can easily pour things out and drink or brush your teeth whatever i have already done two trips with friends and you know there's enough space for my friend's bag my bag and then of course if you don't have enough space then you can put things on top so uh this works really well this futon bed and it's ideal and exactly how i wanted it to be because now i can also use it as a sofa if i want to you can push it back a bit to get you know a nicer angle on it so it's a bit more comfortable and uh you know maybe when the weather's a bit nicer i might actually use this a bit more but might have to wait until next year because we are getting into winter now these two back windows they actually stay on permanently i made that from hessian material um, blackout material and sellotex and yeah as i say it always stays on because uh, there's no point taking it off if it was really sunny then all of the heat would be reflected so I don't know it probably would get quite hot in here but the sellotex that's between these two materials um, should do the trick and for here I won't get it out but I do also have very similar to these side windows a rolled sellotex blackout cover which you just stick on again with uh, some velcro stick on velcro will literally become your best friend because I used it for pretty much everything that's why you just have to be a bit gentle and careful and once you stay in the car for a few times like I have you begin to uh, get a process and a routine of how you need to do things in order because otherwise it's a bit of a faff having to move everything around but so far so good I also have these nettings here which again are from Amazon linked in the description just for some cleaning products I've got a brush because I'm definitely a bit OCD when it comes to dust and dirt and twigs and mud. I always like to keep it clean whenever I can. And then I have some spray up here, some washing uh, liquid, some soap, just to obviously stay hygienic. And I can do my washing up with my good old scrubbing brush. So everything is working quite nicely so far. So one of the last things really ooh, is the roof box. I'm not sure exactly how many liters this roof box is but as you can see I've got plenty of stuff in there I've got a full tool kit just because why not I thought if I need to repair anything on the road then I can I've got my sleeping bag here which I use obviously inside to sleep with snorkel won't be using that yoga mat haven't used that yet just like to be trying hippie I've got some camping chairs for when and if I need them a fridge which i haven't used because i just haven't needed to and this is the 
kitchen platform where I can cook. So having this roof box is absolutely ideal. It just gives you so much more storage and keeps things nice and tidy and hidden away because you don't really notice it. The only downside is you obviously, or I obviously can't get underneath barriers which are 2.2 meters or something, which I realized was a problem on the first day. Oh my God, I already hate myself. Look at this dirt. Ah. I'm finding it crazy that this is literally a car and I feel like I spend 50% of my time just cleaning. So, in terms of the driver's side, just your standard Ford Galaxy, nothing special. I installed a cable so that I could actually listen to my own music. So uh, I ordered that off eBay actually and uh, cut a little hole here just to make it look a bit neater. For me, everything is in the small little details which uh, don't make a huge difference, but in my head they do because I don't know, it just makes things a little bit more comfortable. Even things like, you know, cutting that hole to put the cable through. Yes, it's sad, yes, it's unnecessary but it looks nicer. I'm not sure what my travel plans are now with obviously the pandemic, but having a car that I can sleep in gives me so much freedom to go absolutely anywhere. I just need a nice little travel companion, which I'll have in the next video. So if you do like travel videos, travel vlogs, van vlogs, van videos, you name it, or you have any questions at all, drop them in the comments, give this video a like, please consider subscribing because plenty more videos to come in the future. Let me know what you guys think of the van, think if there's anything that I can improve on or any changes that you would do yourself. And make sure to give me a follow on Instagram because I post lots of pictures of just my travels, general landscape photography, all that kind of good stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I shall catch you in the next one. Peace. I came from the mud, desert on my head.